Hello, and welcome to Clea's World. I am Clea, and today I will share with you more of the information I've received from the 25th dimension during my last QHHT hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript, and when I refer to Carolyn, that is my hypnotist who's reading, who's asking me questions that I prepared in advance. And when I refer to me, uh, I'm talking about myself under hypnosis, which means it's a 25th dimension answering. But before we move forward, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And please do give this video a thumbs up. It really makes a difference for me. And uh, lastly, but certainly not least or leastly, not sure how you say that in this case, <laughs> please do comment below to let me know if the stuff resonates with you. I love hearing from you guys. I just love hearing what everybody's going through because there is a lot of strange stuff going on <laughs> in our reality right now. And, uh, and I'm always curious to see what the different people are experiencing. All right, without further ado, uh, I'm going to start reading. Carolyn, and my kitty is super excited when I make these videos because he means I'm sitting in one place <laughs> for a long time, and therefore uh, he gets to be better. <laughs> so you will be seeing an ear pop up, or you know, if we get lucky, we'll have a sighting as well. Carolyn, you told us that people have aligned themselves with the light in this lifetime to be able to get their choice of future reality. Are all the people on the side of the dark, the 20% of the population, are they gonna go back to the 25th or their home planet since they are mostly reptilian? Or will some of them go to 3D chambers or to hang out with the aliens? So when she's referring, I wanna clarify this question just briefly before I start reading the answer from the 25th. She's, she's saying it's 20% of the population because we have been told by the 25th that basically there are three groups of people on this planet, or there were three groups of people on this planet. Uh, it was 20% on the side of the dark, 30% on the side of the light, and then 50% in the middle who are people that basically they didn't want to be fully aligned. They wanted the option to go in one direction or the other and just experience, experience different things. And again, there is no judgment. It's all us, right, at the end of the day. So that's what she's referring to. And she's also asking basically, so what's gonna happen? Do, does the side of the dark, and we're told that basically that the reptilians are the dark team, does it mean it's just them? We've already been told, for example, the greys are have been helping them, et cetera, et cetera. But the question is, the reptilians are, what's happening with them? Are they going back to their home planets? Or do they also get the same choices as we have, as the rest of us has had, which is, 3D chambers, going to hang out with the aliens, or even going to New York. So here is the answer from the 25th. Me. Now, so the reptilians really need a break as much as we do, but even more really. And so the ones who have not chosen to go back to the 25th, and many of them have, because again, these are normal people. And because they have done certain things, they also... It's not like they have no consciousness, what we consider consciousness here. So of course, a lot of them have been MK ultra programmed, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, the spark will happen. You will still, you can only deny yourself for so long. You can only ignore things for so long. So of course, the same way we have seen this happen to us, whereas it's like a freight train, you can't stop it. Once you open this one little thing and all of a sudden, here we are talking with a 25th. You don't know. You can't really put pickets in there or like obstacles to where you're like, oh, I'm just gonna stop here. Same thing is happening with them and everything has accelerated. The energy has accelerated. And so, <laughs> and so because they're aware of these things, a lot of them are very, very, very disappointed with what they have done. And a lot of them have just chosen. This is for them an easy way to go back to the 25th. They'll replenish themselves. They'll refresh themselves. They'll be able to shed a lot of this and they can come back new. We've discussed this before. There are no new souls, but they can come back feeling like they're new souls. And this is absolutely an acceptable solution. But many others of them, they just want to be on their own 
just like we're saying we want to go to new earth so we can actually have time to ourselves to just be. Same thing for them. They just want to go back to their planet and just be and have time to think about and integrate what they have done. So none of them will go to 3D chambers. None of them will go hang out with the aliens the way we are doing. Carolyn, what about their offspring with humans? What choices do they get? Where will they go? Me. So they haven't, okay. So the question is, do reptilians mix with humans? Yes, they do. They can, and it has been done. Depending on how the child, the offspring has been raised, of course, they have a choice, like every other essence has a choice, being on the side of the light or the dark. And unfortunately, obviously, when a lot of this happens, if you're born to a reptilian, you already know you have to assimilate certain things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, of course, it's much easier to be on the side of the dark. And we've already discussed the fact that normally, when you're born to a team, you want to stay with that team. These are your friends or allies, the people you hang out with the most, which means that if somebody wanted to move, they could. Like if a child wanted to be more of the light, they could, okay? Just because you're a reptilian does not mean that, or if you are a mix of a reptilian, does not mean you have to be on the team of the dark. But generally speaking, that's what ends up happening. And so where will these people go? They're probably going to go back with the most of them are going to go to the reptilian planets for that simple reason. These are their friends. These are their families often. And these are their teammates. Carolyn, why has Clea's tunnel been open for eight years if it was meant for people to go to New Earth, which is happening this year? Me. Yeah, time is not real. Yeah, it's been open for eight years because this could have all happened. The my cat is uh, getting comfy, stretching out, and just kicking stuff off the table. <laughs> All right. So why has the tunnel been open for eight years? So you might remember I did a video about this, about this tunnel that's going to take people to New York that ended up uh, taking, you know, other people going back to the 25th ended up using. And so the question is, why has it been open for eight years. I mean, are we behind schedule? Was it supposed to be open eight years ago? So the answer again, me. Yeah, time is not real. Yeah, it's been open for eight years because this could, have, this could have all have happened. This could have happened at any time because it's already happened. And they were laughing here. We're focusing on it right now. <laughs> we're focusing on it right now. So it looks like the present for us, but Carolyn, but really, I guess the question further was, were we supposed to move sooner and it didn't work? Mm -hmm. But as you just said, time, time is not real. So we're just focused on it now. Me, it's open. All we know is that it's open at this time during the takedown, it's open. So it doesn't really matter if it's been open for a year or 20 years or five minutes really. Now, there have been, we'll say there have been people already taking advantage of this tunnel. We already discussed this. People going to the 25th dimension have taken advantage of this tunnel. So if you do want to look at it from the perspective of time, the fact that the tunnel has been open more than five minutes has been useful, okay? And there have been people over the past eight years who have taken advantage of it. So it's good that it's been open and available. A lot of people, a lot of people, we all knew this was coming in this lifetime, okay? Again, and we've explained the difference here. People, souls have been coming here for the takedown for hundreds of years. We didn't know when the takedown was going to happen. Only 12,000 knew this was the lifetime when this was going to happen. But at the same time, we all knew that eventually the takedown would happen. So we just, we happened to have won the lottery in this lifetime. The ones that are here saying, hey, it's actually happening now. Great, I caught it. I caught the event. But because of this reason, in this lifetime, once we realize this is it and the takedown is happening, many people have made the choice, aligned with their choice. And a lot of people, not the majority, the vast majority already know where they are going. But a lot of people have said, I just want to 
you know, this has been a great thing. I've had enough. I'm going to go back to the 25th. So these people for the past 10 years have been leaving and they've been using the tunnel. So it does matter that the tunnel has been open for what we consider about eight years. It has been used. Carolyn. In her first session, you said that Claire is bringing a lot of people with her to New Earth. But if essences have already made their choice to go to New Earth in this lifetime, how is Claire bringing a lot of people? Is this through the tunnel? And again, this is something they refer to in my very first session. The fact that apparently, uh, you know, it, obviously, <laughs> I'm not aware of this, but supposedly one of the things I've done, and we all do different things, and you know, whatever is needed, one of the things I've done is that there, I've created this tunnel that uh, will allow, again, these uh, essences to travel from one place to the other. But the question is, um, they, they mentioned the fact that it will take a lot of people, that I would take a lot of people to New Earth. And I was wondering if it was through this tunnel. So this is the reason why I asked this, me. So initially, when she wrote this question, she believed it was the tunnel, basically. So a very physical way of bringing people to New Earth. The truth is, she now realizes, we are telling her now, that actually this channel is spreading this information. This is how she's bringing a lot of people to New Earth. A lot of people, while they were going to go to New Earth, no matter what, they didn't know how to get there, and now they know. And I didn't want to spoil the surprise, but this is why I left this entire bit about the tunnel in here, uh, because I thought it was super cool. And again, it's not because of me. It's because, uh, or even the words that we're saying in the 21st, I has explained this. It's because of the codes that are hidden in the message. So we, at a conscious level, we might not be uh, aware of what these codes are doing, but in the background are essences recognize these codes, which is wonderful. I love this. Carolyn, because she's spreading the information, me, the codes that are within this information is not just the words. We talked about this. It's not the words. Carolyn, amazing. Me, it's the codes. It's what are these people remembering to do? All of this is, again, we could be speaking Chinese. Yeah, we wish you to understand us. But it's not about what we say, is it? It's about you listening. What are you seeking? Carolyn, what am I hearing? Me, what are you seeking? And whatever you're seeking, that's what you will find. This is just something that you have created. And here we are, sitting on your bed here. And I'm giving you this information. What are the chances of that? How many more people do you know that have, they are telling you this information? You wanted this, you made it happen. You picked a person, you said, here's what's gonna happen. It could have been Claire, it could have been anybody else. This is so cool how we set everything up. And that's why I was saying, it's not about me, it's not about Claire. Again, Claire's a shell. It's, it's our make belief uh, separation tool, you know, these bodies. The question is, what are we doing for each other in the background? How are we bringing each other the experience that our essence craves to have? Carolyn, yes, yes. You told us that God does not interfere with our reality within the matrix, but we often talk about divine timing when we refer to things having to happen on a timeline that is not what we would personally choose. Is this concept correct? Or does it have to do more with our higher self's timing? Or perhaps our wishing for something that's not good for us? I mean, laughing, they were laughing. You know, we do, we do enjoy this. We have such a great sense of humor on this planet. Isn't it funny? We don't really believe in God. We pretend to believe. We have no idea because if we actually truly believed, we knew that it was God. We know that we are God, and yet we love to think of this divine timing, like it's outside of us. I think that's happening. So we love how we come up with these words. They're so hilarious when you know the truth behind what is really happening. Is there a divine timing? Everything is divine, and there is no time. So is there a divine timing? There is no time, but there is divine. And it's funny because we believe in time, which is not real, 
but we do not believe in the divide, which is as real as it gets. And they were cracking themselves up when they said this, <laughs> which I can see that is pretty funny. So besides that, and we'll stop laughing now because we find this all very humorous, but yeah. So basically what we refer to as divine timing, yes, we are just impatient, of course, because everything is so slow in 3D. Everything that we wish, even when the essence does change its mind, you know, in the 3D with all these dense energies, things take time. And therefore, yeah. And many times these things are just never going to manifest, not even in divine timing as in, okay, it's not happening. I would like it to be done yesterday, but it's going to take another year. It might just never happen because it's just not what our essence desires. And we have spoken about this. We have spoken at length about manifestation. We just wanted to point out how funny the expression divine timing is. You will share in our humor soon when you realize, and they were laughing here. We know that some of these things might not, you might not comprehend how exact, exactly funny this is, but it's very, very funny. And they were laughing again. <laughs> So I guess it is very funny. <laughs> Once you're on new earth and you realize what you know and everything falls and we realize all the expressions we created because we know, right? And we play with that. But we twisted. We had fun with that. We really, truly have enjoyed ourselves. We've had a good time here and we are very funny. We have a great sense of humor. And Carolyn's comment, humor is the way to live. <laughs> Uh, I do refer here, they do refer to the manifestation. They've spoken a length of manifestation. I will link the video before uh, below in the um, description box, but feel free to go look for it. Basically, it was in the series of the 25th answers questions uh, from you guys, so from the viewers. And they I do have a video. They uh, basically went uh, really deep into how we manifest things and, and the reason for why certain things work and others don't work out. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in the next video. Take care and thank you.